States of matter, also called phases of matter, also called the kinetic model theory, KMT. And kinetic means movement. Okay, the states of matter. Basically remember, matter is anything that has mass and volume. Mass is measured in grams, volume in liters or milliliters. Technically, there are five states of matter. You know probably four of them. The last one will be the new one for you. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma, and then the newest one, the Bose-Einstein condensate. All right, let's start off with solids. Solids have a definite shape and a definite volume, which means their shape and their volume does not change. The particles vibrate in place, so they're packed in very nice, neat, and tight and they just sit there and vibrate. There are two types. We have the crystalline solid and we have an amorphous solid. Crystalline solids are where the particles are lined up in nice neat rows and it's repeating patterns. Think of like a stadium where all the seats are in, you know, nice rows, everybody's packed in. And if that was a solid and we could see like inside your desk, that's how they would be lined up and the people in there are just vibrating in place. That's what the atoms are doing. Amorphous solids, this time the particles do not line up in nice repeating rows. Um, they do create the rigid stuff, but it's not repeating. So you can see here, here's a crystalline um, example of quartz. And you'll see it's the three blue with the one red in the middle. Here, it's a little bit more random. The sizes are different shapes, there's different structures. Even though they're both made out of the same thing, the same silicone oxide, you can see that the structure is a little bit different. So some examples of solids. Of crystalline solids, pretty much everything in this room with the exception of windows or the glass in the picture frames. Everything else is a crystalline solid. Your amorphous solids are your windows. Um, if you've ever seen old buildings and it looks like the windows are sagging, like if you go to Savannah, you'll notice that it seems like they're drooping a little bit, the glass themselves. That's an amorphous solid. Uh, our grounds, okay, well not our grounds, the uh, tar for roads, that's an amorphous solid. All right, liquids. They have a definite shape, excuse me, a definite volume, which means if I take my two liter bottle of Dr. Pepper and I pour it into a bucket, it's still two liters. However, it has an indefinite shape. It can take the shape of the container. For example, the two liter bottle of Dr. Pepper is a shape of the bottle of Dr. Pepper. I pour it into a bucket, it, looks, it takes the shape of a bucket. I pour it into the bathtub, it's the shape of a bathtub. But the volume has changed. The particles are not in nice, neat, repeating patterns. This allows them to slide past each other, which gives it that sloshing kind of view. And here's an image. You can see they're not nice and neat. They can kind of move back and forth, which is what allows liquid to flow. Gas. Gas has an indefinite volume and an indefinite shape. Those particles move rapidly and they want to get away from each other. Um, if you've ever bought a balloon um, in a store on a, you know, and it's cold in the store and you take it outside and it's warmer and that uh, balloon gets bigger and bigger, it's because those particles are a little bit, they're moving faster, they want to get away from each other. It's kind of like after you were running um, a relay race. You don't want somebody coming up and hugging up on you. Your particles are moving quickly. You want to keep everybody away. It's the same idea. So you can kind of see it here. The particles are trying to get away from each other. They're bouncing off of the container that they're in. All right. So let's kind of, kind of summarize all that up real quick. We're going to look at the phase. Proximity means how close everything is, how much energy it has, how is it moving, and its volume and shape. So, let's start off with solids. They're very close together and we're talking about the particles. Not a lot of energy. If you could look at your desk with an electron micro microscope, you would see the little particles in there and they're actually vibrating. But we can't feel it because it's so small. So the mo uh, motion is vibrational, 
has a definite shape, definite volume. The liquid, the particles are a little bit more farther apart, but they're still considered pretty close. A little bit more energy, so moderate. They move by rotational, which means they're spinning past each other constantly. The volume is definite, but the shape is indefinite. Gas, the proximity, far apart. It has a lot of energy, that's why it's trying to get away from each other. The motion, fancy term here, called translational, trying to get away. The volume is indefinite because it can spread out according to temperature, and it means its shape is indefinite as well. Now there are two different states of matter that they probably did not teach you in school until now. Plasma and this thing called the Bose-Einstein condensate. All right, we know solids, liquids, and gases. These are all the exact same picture um, of a same waterfall at the same at different time periods. Over here on the left, you can see it's a very low temperature. Everything's frozen. There's a little bit of water coming through. The medium temperature is your liquids, and then it's very steamy and hot at the higher temperatures. But what would happen if we could raise that temperature to super high levels? Will it just remain a gas? Well, the answer is no. If the gas is made up of particles which carry an electric charge, and we call those ionized particles, we'll get into that when we start talking more about ions, even though we have discussed it a little bit, and that that's the change of um, ions, the entire gas will have no electric charge, and the density is not too high, then we get what's called plasma. Lots of different examples of plasma. Fire, lightning, the aurora borealis, or the northern lights, stars, different signs, and actually 99% of the universe is plasma. The sun, different nebula. All right, so we know about those four states, but what would happen if we could lower the temperature to absolute zero? Would everything just be a solid? No. In 1994, two scientists, Albert Einstein and Dr. Bose, predicted a fifth state of matter, which would only occur at very low temperatures. And in 1995, Dr. Wolfgang Ketterle and his team of graduate students were able to discover the fifth state of matter for the first time and they called it Bose-Einstein condensate. All it means is that the atoms no longer bounce around or vibrate in place. They all look exactly the same. You can't see one atom from the other. If one moves to the right, they all go to the right. If one vibrates to the left, they all go to the left. This is what um, a computer image would look of the Bose-Einstein condensate. Kind of cool. I love this image. What about that one? Ah, my favorite. So when you get into quantum physics, you'll actually learn a lot about Bose-Einstein condensate. In 2002, Ketterle and two other scientists received the Nobel Prize for discovering the Bose-Einstein condensate. So there you have it, the five states of matter. Bose-Einstein condensate, solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. And when we do physical changes, that's changing from a solid to a liquid or any of your phase changes. Your properties remain the same. Most of the time it's reversible. You can use to separate a thing called mixtures, which we'll get into. All right, and we're going to stop there.